Are you one of those people on the fence about whether or not you should play the newest Fire Emblem game? After hearing about the lukewarm review scores and low sales in Japan, many fans might be afraid that the new Fire Emblem game is just another rerun of Shadow Dragon, a lackluster remake reusing 20-year-old outdated game mechanics in an attempt to appease the nostalgic fans, throwing popular features of the newer games such as marriage, children and a self-inserted avatar out of the window. Well, if you are one of those people, then this video is for you. If you have decided that Fire Emblem Echo's Shadows of Valencia is not worth your time, then you are depriving yourself of an absolutely amazing game. In this video, I will do what IGN could not. I will try to convince you why you need to play Fire Emblem Echo's Shadows of Valencia. The Story Right from the very get-go, Shadows of Valencia grips you by the heartstrings and plunges you right into its world of storytelling. Voice acting makes it so that the characters feel more alive than in any of the other Fire Emblem games, as you can hear the emotion in their voice when they speak. While most of the Fire Emblem games feel like they revolve around the main cast, Shadows of Valencia makes it seem like almost every single playable character is involved in the story one way or another. Sure, Alm and Selica hog a big part of the spotlight, but the way the sidecast constantly shows up during cutscenes makes it truly seem like they are present in the story. They are real people with their own viewpoints and opinions, and it comes across really strong when they discuss the current events of the story among themselves. It is also remarkable how Shadows of Valencia has taken a relatively simple plot from a 20-year-old game, Gaiden, and instead of drastically changing it, they have simply enriched it. They have taken the skeletal frame presented by Gaiden and fleshed out everything within it in a way that makes perfect sense. They have, of course, added a few extra characters to the story, and given characters who previously had next to no dialogue in the game a lot of backstory and debt. But they remain faithful to Gaiden's original story in a way that is very impressive. The story is easy to get behind both for newcomers and veterans alike, and makes a lot of sense in the way it's told. It doesn't try to be something it's not, and because it's presented so beautifully, it doesn't need to be. The Characters One of the biggest complaints people had regarding Awakening and Fates was that many of its characters felt very gimmicky, and to really experience their full debt, you had to delve deep into their support conversations, where most of their backstory lied. As in the main story of the game, they remained rather one-sided and simple. Shadows of Valencia throws this completely out of the window. While there are certainly some characters that follow some of the archetypical cliches known from the other games, the majority of the cast feel like real people. They have traits that certainly puts them apart from each other, but they aren't constantly rubbing their gimmicks into your face at every opportunity they get. The villains are also of a caliber we haven't seen in a while. While some of them may be a bit cartoonish and silly, they feel like real people, with real motivations and ambitions. Most of them aren't just evil for the sake of being evil like certain other antagonists, you can actually sympathize with their goals and understand why they're behaving in the way that they are. Gameplay This is probably one of people's biggest fears when it comes to this game. How can intelligent systems justify taking 20-year-old game mechanics from Gaiden and expect them to hold up in 2017? Well, you'd be surprised how much fun the actual game mechanics of Gaiden can be once you get rid of the awfully slow animations of the NES and add the amazingly fast-flowing gameplay and spectacular animations from the 3DS. One of the new features, Combat Arts, also adds a layer of depth to the game that makes your units a lot more fun to use. In short, Combat Arts are like magic, but for your physical units, and are unlocked when they are holding onto certain types of equipment for prolonged periods of time. Combat Arts can come in the form of special attacks that boosts your avoid, reduces enemy terrain effects, or simply just increases your damage and accuracy, all at the cost of hit points, just like magic. Because using Combat Arts weakens your units, you have to constantly weigh the risk of using them, gauging the benefits of their short-term power versus their long-term costs. While the map design may be a bit off at times due to many of the maps being copied directly from Gaiden, it is actually a lot more fun to play than you may think due to how quick the game is. If you want to move your armies across big distances, simply use the charge command and skip the player phase, and all of your units will move quickly towards the enemies in the blink of an eye. While I do admit that a mechanic like this shouldn't be needed if the map design was better, the fact that it is here trivializes one of the biggest complaints I personally have about this game, which are the somewhat long and unnecessarily big maps. The same goes for grinding. 
A lot of people might be worried it gets slow, repetitive and annoying after a while, but this isn't the case at all due to how much you can speed up the game. If you run into a simple encounter that doesn't require much effort, such as a small pack of zombies, you can simply use the charge command, skip both the player and the enemy face, and usually you'll have killed most of the enemies by the start of your next turn. You won't be able to safely do this against some of the tougher random encounters, but just turning animations off if you have a lot of enemies to fight will make the fights go by incredibly quickly. Also, this notion that you have to grind and grind and grind in Echoes is simply not true. While I personally have not beaten the game yet at the time of making this video, I have talked to several people who have managed to get to the end of Hard Classic without any excessive grinding. Don't listen to IGN, they do not know what they're talking about. The new fatigue mechanic may be a little bit tedious, but there are so many ways to counteract it. It certainly does not feel anywhere near as annoying as it did in Tracia 776, as it will only ever affect you while you're down in dungeons. Food is plentiful and can be found everywhere, and if you reach a Mila statue, you can offer a single piece of food to clear the fatigue from your entire party. And if it really gets bad, you can just retreat from the dungeon and re-enter it, completely clearing your fatigue. Mila's turn wheel is also one of the better mechanics introduced in Echoes. It allows you to go back in time and redo certain actions on the battlefield, but it has a limit and can't be used endlessly. While I was initially very negative on the idea of a casual feature like this making its way into Fire Emblem, I have since come to absolutely adore it. I don't like playing on casual mode, it just doesn't feel like Fire Emblem to me, but I'm also not a massive fan of a single bad RNG roll killing one of my units and making me restart a map. Mila's turn wheel offers a very nice compromise to the hard core players who don't want to play in casual mode but don't like a single mistake screwing them over, and personally it has greatly increased my enjoyment of the game. The design. Last but certainly not least is the way the game presents itself. Shadows of Valencia is a visual masterpiece, with beautiful anime style cutscenes that gives the game a very distinct, unique feel, fantastic music and beautiful artwork. This game is simply a treat for your eyes and ears from start to finish. The voice acting of Echoes is personally some of the best I have ever heard in a video game. Localizing a Japanese speaking game is very tricky, as the Japanese language is very distinct and different to English in the way that it's structured. As a result, often when a Japanese voice acted game gets localized, the dialogue can come across as a little bit stiff and robotic, because some of the lines in Japanese just doesn't translate well over to English. The localization team of Shadows of Valencia, however, have mastered this. None of the dialogues feel forced or out of place. The characters speak with convincing emotion, and they sound like real people having real conversations. Conversations. Design wise, almost every single character stands out in a meaningful way, making them incredibly memorable. Particularly, their armor and attire is beautifully done. While there certainly is fan service in this game in the form of cleavage, pecs, and thighs, the characters don't feel ridiculously oversexualized like in some of the other games, but some of them are still pretty enough to cater to your fan service needs, if that's what you're into. The combat animations are also absolutely stunning, and very addictive and fun to watch. When the camera zooms in on two units fighting, it depicts the attacking unit already running towards the target in full sprint while drawing their weapon. When archers loosen their bows, the camera follows the arrow all the way to its target, really giving you an amazing perspective. Magic looks and feels incredibly powerful when used. When a unit only takes a single point of damage, they display a deflect or block animation, symbolizing that they just took a glancing blow. When units dodge, they jump to the side just before the blow is supposed to connect, making the combat feel dynamic and interesting. At the end of the day, I really understand why some people would initially be very skeptical towards this game. It throws many stable features of the Fire Emblem franchise completely out of the window and follows its own set of rules, but lower your skepticism towards new things and be open to some of the features this game holds, and you might be pleasantly surprised over how much fun you will be having. Try to avoid thinking that it's just another remake of a 20 year old game, it doesn't really deserve that label at all. Don't listen to IGN, they clearly do not have much knowledge about the Fire Emblem franchise franchise and what makes a good Fire Emblem game. Allow yourself to be immersed in the beautiful storytelling of this game, because at the end of the day, Intelligent Systems really outdid themselves with this one. You can tell that a lot of heart, passion and soul was poured into this game, and that the people behind it really went out of their way to create an amazing experience that should be able to cater to beginners and veterans both. And that, my friend, is why you should play Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valencia. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I put a lot of effort into it, so please give it a like and a comment if you found it entertaining. Also, if you want to share it to a message board you frequent or to a friend who's skeptical towards trying out this game, that would be great as well. Also, if you want to support my work on Patreon, that would be very helpful. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Min Manx, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.